Juana La Loca, or Juana the Mad, as she is most often referred to in history, was the daughter of one of the most revered queens of all time, Queen Isabella I and her husband, King Ferdinand of Aragon. As the third child of the legendary Catholic monarchs, she was never meant to be queen. But when tragedy struck her older brother and sister, she became the Princess of Asturias, heir to the throne. Stories about her are legendary. But was she really as crazy as the stories say, or was she the victim of an elaborate plot by the men in her life to take her power? I'll let you decide. Juana was born in 1479. By all reports, she was a pretty girl with a good aptitude for learning. She reportedly mastered the three languages of the Iberian Peninsula, as well as French and Latin. And while never formally educated to be the monarch, she did receive a great education at the hands of her mother, who took a very active role in making sure her four daughters were educated and prepared for their roles as royals and emissaries to the Spanish Empire. She was the older sister of Catherine of Aragon, who would go on to be the first wife of the notorious Henry VIII of England. Although her mother was one of the strongest and most notable queens regnant in history, Juana was really brought up in the idea that she was to be subservient to the men around her. Juana was married to Philip the Handsome, Duke of Burgundy, at age 16, and a double ceremony where her older brother Juan married Margaret, Philip's sister, in an arrangement made by her parents and Maximilian I, the Holy Roman Emperor, the father of Margaret and Philip. Juana went to live in Flanders with Philip while Margaret came to Castile to prepare to be the eventual queen alongside of Juan. By all accounts, Juana was immediately smitten with her husband and was very jealous of any other woman who tried to get his attention. Legend has it that she attacked a mistress of Philip's and beat her and pulled out all of her hair. After this jealous display, it is said that Philip became enraged and began treating Juana abusively. He dismissed all her Castilian ladies-in-waiting and denied her money for her household and clothing, leaving her looking like a beggar in front of his own court. Despite this, the couple still managed to have six children together. Tragedy struck when her elder brother died in 1497 at the age of 19, and her elder sister died shortly after giving birth in 1498, and she suddenly became heir to the throne of both Castile and Aragon. Legend says that she exhibited signs of mental instability in 1504 when her beloved mother became ill. Juana traveled back to Castile to be with her, and while there, she was eating and sleeping very little. While some thought this behavior erratic, it most likely is explained at this time by stress and depression. Juana knew the responsibility that would be upon her when her mother died. Castile was a country that had spent numerous recent years at war. Juana was not as strong as her mother had been and was quickly shoved out of the way by her husband eager to take over as King of Castile and her father who also did not want to give up the power he had enjoyed as Isabella's husband in Castile. As Castile was larger and more wealthy than his neighboring kingdom of Aragon, both her husband and her father quickly asserted power and worked in agreement to have Juana declared mentally unfit to rule in Castile. She was imprisoned in a castle in Tordesillas under her father's orders. However, the collaboration between her father and Philip quickly disintegrated as both wished to rule Castile on their own. Ferdinand quickly lost the support of the Castilian people. Philip carried on ruling in Juana's name, but months later he would die of typhoid fever and leave Juana a widow, eight months pregnant. Philip's death led to one of the most notorious stories in all of history and was used by both Juana's father and her eldest son Philip to justify that she was mentally unsound. Grief-stricken at the sudden death of the husband she so loved beyond all logical reason was too much to bear for the emotionally volatile Juana. Suspicions were high in Castile and even with Juana that her husband had been poisoned by her father Ferdinand as their power struggle over Juana and the rule of Castile had devolved into constant quarreling. Philip's embalmed body was placed in a monastery near the town where he died, and stories spread like fire that she had had the coffin opened every night to embrace her dead husband. In truth, Juana only did this once five weeks after his death in response to rumors that his body had been stolen. The story goes that she began kissing his feet and had to be dragged from the crypt by force. 
having to leave Borjos because of the contagious disease gripping the town, she took the coffin with her because it was eventually to reside in Granada, where her mother was buried. The coffin was guarded by an armed escort, and she reportedly kept all females away and only traveled during the night and only rested in monasteries and avoided the nunneries. She went into labor along the way and refused the help of any midwives and gave birth to her daughter Catalina alone. After a few months' recovery from birth, she resumed the journey to Granada, and when a storm broke, she refused to shelter in a nunnery. She stopped in a small village where once again she opened the coffin before finally coming to Granada. Her total trip was 415 miles. Unfortunately, this did nothing but fuel the fire of the rumors both her father and her husband had spread about her previously. In the months that followed, her father once again took control of Castile and had Juana locked away with her last child. When Ferdinand died, her son Charles, who had been raised by Philip's sister Margaret, came to take control of Castile. He went to see his mother and was reportedly disturbed at the conditions his mother and youngest sister lived in, but did nothing to change them. Going along further with the narrative of her mental incapacity and taking up the reins as king, Charles ruled in as regent in her name until Juana's death in 1555 at the age of 75. Juana was known to be one of the brightest of Isabella and Ferdinand's children. Though prone to moodiness and fits as a child, her very intelligent and politically astute mother seemed to think she was capable of being a Spanish emissary and influence over her husband in an effort to lure Burgundy away from the influence of the French. It's hard to imagine that if Juana truly had been mad, she would have been trusted with such an important task. Juana was known to be remarkably resilient and even challenged her husband in his bid for power. So it seems coincidental that Philip was the first to accuse her of being unfit. After all, his ability to become king was only due to power he would get from being her husband. So it's quite unsettling that at this time that most of all the reports of Juana La Loca began. Regardless of the truth, Juana died alone and isolated, even having lost the companionship of Catalina, who was married off for political gain by her brother Philip V, who had also become the Holy Roman Emperor. Her story is one of the loneliest and saddest in history. While it can certainly be said that Juana was unorthodox, moody, and emotionally volatile, we'll never for sure know if she was truly mad or the sad victim of power-hungry men. But nevertheless, she is how history happens. I hope you'll join me next time for another great history tale.